beautiful good afternoon and welcome to another live uh, from us at the Panteray Approach. So this great Thursday I have the privilege and pleasure of inviting Claudia to join me. Um, Claudia Glovic is co-director and co-founder of the Panteray Approach and uh, we're going to talk today about the subject of nonverbal communication. So definitely a subject that is very broad and super interesting. Just pause my video. Here we are, Claudia. Hi. <laughs> Here I am. Each time we try something new, I think. <laughs> Absolutely. And in the context of communication, this is a great one. These are technology to, to aid or um, enhance our reach in our communication. You can especially say about non-verbal communication, we press the pause and we are in silence and it will say so much. <laughs> totally, totally. Yeah. I don't have to move room or change space. <laughs> it's an, at a push of a button. Absolutely. Um, so I was just talking a little about um, having this, this wish to, to communicate, to be um, at times, I know it from, from myself in conversations where you wish to be understood, truly understood and wouldn't have to explain everything word for word and try to contextualize a story or a feeling or a sensation. Um, and it's almost like, a, I think Vered in, in the last newsletter referred to it almost as a superpower of being able to understand beyond what, what someone says with the words that they used, um, which facilitates communication. So I would love for you to talk a little bit about that uh, context of communicating beyond words, what, Communicate nonverbal communication is in the context of the Pantare approach. Yes, I will love to do that. I mean, it is a very large context, this nonverbal communication, and I think it reaches far beyond Pantare and how we use it in our work with clients. So I'm sure we will still come back to that. But I think we often forget that. I, I just read before the, we started our life that when we talk with somebody, when we converse, that actually only 7% of the interpretation that we take from the communication is from the spoken word. And 93% of understanding the message, understanding the person that is behind there is actually detected by non-verbal clues so in any communication apparently we communicate each time non-verbally in order to understand each other it just becomes somehow less and less that we have that in our attention and um, i believe that the more we would be able to recognize that or have that in our awareness that then communication would become much more flowing again. It's a bit like using our back to the roots because in the beginning when we were born and I think for, depends on when somebody learns to talk, but we were dependent to communicate through nonverbal clues and also to understand the other person by reading their body language, their facial expression, the tonation in the voice. And I would say often communication flew, floated very well. And somehow and then to come back to that when we are conversing with words and when we are so um, keen on listening to them, uh, and yes, in order to understand somebody, than to have that knowledge, ah, it's much more than just the words that are spoken uh, that I need to do or pay attention to in order to understand the other person. So the, I think, nonverbal part uh, should be never underestimated in conversations. And especially if we feel, ah, we are not understood or I don't understand the other person, Maybe I need to tune on on a different level of the communication in order to get back into flowing or into the part of superpowers that are there and we all have them. 
And it's also a very different um, context because there's a whole science around what you mentioned at the beginning of now um, categorizing um, posture and uh, facial expression and that body language and how much space we leave uh, when we stand next to each other conversing with them, that that already you can analyze all these data to to try and find out uh, what that means or what's what's the as if there was a hidden meaning or something else that was um, being transmitted. Um, but you're talking about something much more about connecting to the person and having them in your in a different sense of perception um, in in that frame of listening. Yes, it's, it's true that there are many categories that it almost feels as if I need to be and uh, uh, learn uh, and um, get the knowledge in how to read somebody's facial expression, what to make if somebody is slumping or sitting straight or a frown, how to interpret that. But if we, we would refer to that just as knowledge, it's so quickly overwhelming <clears throat> Beside then listening to the world, how will I catch up with all of this information? Now, here comes the true superpower that I think makes it possible to read all of these signs. And that is depending on our ability to feel another person and to sense uh, who they are or how they feel while they are talking. And if we do that, then we interpret this kind of signs that I can put in different categories um, very, maybe not easily, but at least we, we are aware of them and have access to them without the need to uh, think about them uh, so that it can happen parallel to our ability to think in a conversation. So it just adds to the understanding level. And I know not everybody maybe trust what they feel and that's a different another issue to to add but I believe if we would do that in a com conversation we feel oh now right now I have no clue where my what my partner or person there in front of me wants to tell me um, and I would take a mini second to notice but what do I sense from them? Are they happy? Are they sad? Are they uh, themselves maybe at loss for words? Then it would give me already another uh, more ideas to where the conversation could go. And that is depending on how we feel the other person, our ability to notice. Or if it's not the other person, what the com communication does to me and how does it make me feel oh i get all stressed maybe the partner in front of me is also already all stressed um up and uh, is this has this anything to do with the topic at all no but apparently it's stressful to bring children in the morning to school <laughs> and <laughs> maybe we should now not get all hooked up on uh, um, let's say, discussing another topic, but take the stress out of the situation. Um, I think the, our, their, our ability to feel and sense make um, the, the overwhelming information that otherwise we would need to interpret into one that becomes accessible and um, very easily, easily, not the wrong word, but uh, then it is something that we do, we did all the time. Which brings it nicely into um, communication about feeling, about how we are left feeling and how we also influence the feeling of somebody else. Um, that is that element that goes beyond, beyond words and beyond what we say. Yeah. And which then makes it actually interesting to communicate because at the end of the day, communication is to connect with somebody or to share something or again to understand uh, um, a, a topic uh, even if we disagree to understand I'm disagreeing with somebody here and then or I exchange information that can be useful but it's all about the, the part communication connects and brings us I think there together.
And I think what, what um, I remember we, we spoke briefly about um, in preparation of this, this live, and, and you mentioned a beautiful word there of, of trust, and uh, that trusting ourselves to, to have the ability to sense other people um, in, in conversation and to, to trust that whatever it is that's telling us, ah, they are not quite in line with how, how, I, how you sense the situation is maybe not quite in line with exactly the words they're using or how they're describing things. And I would add there to dare to ask, to be curious, to say, right, you're saying this, I sense something else happening here, or I sense, and to mention it, to name it, to, to, give, it, um, to give it space. Yeah, it's something that when we come back to, let's say, learning to become a practitioner or in the training field, we teach our students quite a lot because we find it utterly important that they are understanding what the clients are telling them and to see the person behind the words. And in this sense, also to then have the possibility to add exactly the non-verbal part to the communication, to ask the question, like you said, um, you are saying that, that you are all happy and shining, but I sense that there is also something that bothers you. What is that? Or we are talking about our next holiday. It should be a very <laughs> relaxing topic, but apparently it is not. Maybe then the conversation would lead to a different topic, but we would stay connected in who we are and conversing together. And it's very interesting with the term or with this whole topic of trust, because I think a lot of times when we were maybe growing up, uh, we, in, in the normal communication, the messages that are delivered outwards and how the person is feeling are often contradicting. So I would feel my mother is maybe tired and I would ask her and she would say, no, everything is all right. Or we meet in the street just occasionally and somebody asks you, how are you? And I would normally answer, everything is okay. That amazing question, how are you? Yes, <laughs> yes. I'm great. I would <laughs> say that. Everything is going on, but I'm great. <laughs> exactly. So I think the question, how are you, might be one of the worst questions in order to instill trust in ourselves to notice how a person is feeling. Because so often there, it doesn't match, at least in that occasion, not what truly is there. So if I really want to converse with somebody and we have the time for it, it is almost again necessary to meet the person and to add the feeling to it or to add the question to it, to see like maybe we don't trust what we feel, but we could also recheck it with the person who is conversing and already the I would say asking uh, brings us again closer because maybe then the other person says, no, I'm not tired. I'm just uh, overwhelmed or like we are all with these words, but I'm actually very happy. This is just my way of expressing it. And then we would enter into another field because we said, ah, this is how you express happiness. Funny because you become so <laughs> quiet. I would be bumping all over the place. And uh, It, it would all already lead to, again, I would say more connection and more being, um, being there together. But, Which is... Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Now we don't have Venet anymore. Like it's our first uh, live where it's just the two of us. So I keep on talking. But uh, let's say it's, it's, it's very... Um, I think we consciously need to remind us that we can trust what we sense and that we when we are grown up, at least even as children also, we can ask the question, uh, like you phrase it, I notice this and that, is something bothering you? Uh, to install that, and we learned, I think, a lot of the times not to trust it. So it needs, I think, the extra um, uh, validation to add that back into communication. 
which is something beautiful that that you teach all your your students um, when they in their process of becoming Pantare practitioners. I think generally, in, in as you mentioned before, in therapeutic contexts, this ability to to have that space, to hold that space for the person, to trust what you sense from the person, and then to ask those questions uh, that go a little deeper than how are you? I'm fine, and to believe that and take it at face value. Yeah. I think sometimes when uh, clients come in for a first session and there is, let's say, the starting with verbally conversing why they are here, who they are, getting to know them, um, they, there is a mixture of, who I have here really somebody who asks, I have here really somebody who wants to hear, I have here really somebody in front of me that would like to understand and maybe even phrases things out loud that I didn't notice I feel that way. And the combination of that allows a person to, to be feel seen. And sometimes only that would be already uh, such a, um, such a, healing uh, moment that that f f from this of course more develops and uh, often in a session when we meet our clients this is not where it stops like then it continues but if i would only look at the, the moment to sit in front of somebody and they are not correcting me they are not yet optimizing me into anything but they're so interested in getting to know and seeing me and helping me even to take that space by asking questions that non-verbal clues gave them that are based on what is in the room between us, what is there to be felt on rechecking. Is this really true? Does this um, string a chord in you? And that's already very wonderful. Uh, it's, a, uh, it's, a, it's a, how you say, it's a, Ooh, I would say it's like the spa for the soul. <laughs> <laughs> for sure, that holding that space for someone and, and allowing them to feel seen um, and to be given that space to be who they are and, and for it to be okay, whatever comes and whatever is inside um, for that to show. And then in, in sessions in the Pantare approach that moves then from that dialogue in, onto generally uh, something like a massage table where you then work with hands-on, where the communication f continues that flow but becomes much more physical. Exactly. There I could get now all excited about the topic even more. <laughs> like we, we had already our live uh, Insta about how much we refer to touch as a form of communication. If you missed that one, go to our YouTube channel because there are all of the recordings there. But we really in the Pantare refer to touch as a form of communication that I think if you listen from what I said before, Nicole said before, it's wired in our system to communicate on that level that is by feeling another person, that is by body language. And of course, if I'm now using touch, I'm directly on that kind of giveaway sources of okay i touch the body and now i can feel what does it has to tell me what has this person to tell me not now in words but in who who i feel is underneath my hand we can talk about um, how much space i would like to have in my life and how much this could be expanding and then i can really with my hands continue this communication and ask, okay, how much space do you have? How can we expand that? What are here our options? Is this something that is scary for you, pleasurable for you? Uh, and all of that would be reflected by signs often that are accompanied also verbally, but with movement, with expressions, with sounds, with touch, like touch from me to the client. <laughs> Here I have a dog. Come here. Definitely a communication. Sorry, non-verbal communication. 
yeah needs um, to be expressed yeah he he knows exactly somebody's coming and i understood him but coming back to the clients on the table and this whole topic when i communicate through touch in this way i have access immediately to one of the basic forms of communication and then i can learn the person and who they are but it allows the person also to feel themselves it's not only gives me the sensation ah uh, this is what i can learn or here we create more space but it's the communication that is steered between me and myself almost that then says oh wow this is how it feels this is what i can remember this is how i can recreate it um, uh, and so on so there mm, the nonverbal part of communication takes then not only uh, uh, this but a, a lot and often the words are then accompanying it to complete the experience but it becomes very evident that the words would be a completion to it and not not the only part um, almost makes it easier to understand then for sure and coming back to most sessions that begin um, with a dialogue and certainly in the first session when when a new client um, comes it's it's initially to start with an opening of, of verbal communication and then that dialogue that that deepens um, a common question from many students or and even potential students thinking of of working in this field is um, how to learn this and this deepening of, of their perception and ability to, to read people and read between the lines, um, so to say. So yeah. out of a curiosity, the question of anything you can say about how you teach this. Um. <clears throat> yes, it was, I think, one of our biggest challenges that we often talked in the beginning when Vera and me uh, started to put a structure to the Pantheray. Okay, how can we teach this to people? Because it goes beyond just a technique and maybe there was a question of others it is a personal uh, how do you say uh, it's personal it's not that everybody has it but again if i come back i believe yes we all know how to communicate how to have access to perceiving another person feeling another person um, because this is what we need to do in the beginning now, it might be coming out a little bit different from person to person because we are all unique, but we can enhance our ability to feel again and to put words to it. We can enhance to understand, ah, we are here in a communication part. Now, when we teach our students to um, do that, there are, of course, different aspects. You need to learn to trust, again, what you feel. You need to learn uh, to put words to that. You need to learn how can I communicate this with my clients without now telling somebody a story that doesn't fit at all to them. Maybe it's my own feelings and not the feelings of my clients. How should I know? There are many, you could say, aspects that we are teaching there but I think what makes it teachable is uh, that we do it by many different exercises that include already touch, that include already, um, okay, now sense the other person, connect to who you are, reflect that back. Uh, how does it make you feel? How did it make the other person feel? Um, to understand there is no right or wrong like i don't need to maybe sometimes i my my sense of feeling was off but because i'm in a dialogue and a communication and i phrase questions the other person can say no this is not how i feel but it's this in this way and then i can synchronize and tune and i would say we we bring something that naturally happens out on the surface and deliberately um, yeah, train it, practice it in all of the different kind of exercises and um, have like that a very active, 
practice oriented um, module um, where yes we introduce a topic like we too now discuss that and then we would invite the students okay and now we do that exercise and, and then you do that training and through this you relearn recover uh, your own abilities that per se are there so it's a lot of the the training in the role of the practitioner of how to approach clients how to um, look at asking fitting questions how to make the clients feel safe and seen and also in the background the own personal processes of each um, of the students that is happening of enhancing their ability to trust themselves allowing them to come into contact with what they feel and to be able to reflect that back and bring that into conversation with their with their clients then as well Yes. So very transformative six modules um, for sure. And this is this is a feedback that normally we get <laughs> for sure. And and great that it it is so open. So um, you have students coming who who would like to join the studies for purely for their personal process and to to come into better connection with themselves and the people that are in their uh, day to day surroundings. And then you come to the the whole scale through to those who want to dedicate their lives to, to working in this field and um, enabling these transformative processes for others. Yes, and we should probably write it in the small inscriptions that often if you start for personal reasons, it might change later on still that it will become a passion for life and a profession for life. Uh, because often it's not without any reason that people are interested in that kind of topic, even if um, we know that they come from very different other professional fields uh, before. Um, but I think there also, if I, if I look again at the topic of communication and nonverbal communication, I think all of the people who are interested are in one way or another people who like to communicate in one way or another, even if it would be not with people, but with trees, or uh, if it would be computers before, but to make the flow of uh, a message better, or often there is something of an interest in humans, how we collaborate, um, how we work together, who we are, um, what's the purpose here um, that everybody shares. And I think for a whole humanity, communication is so, so important. If I think communication, a good talk would happen, many, many, many issues could be solved. Uh, and um, I mean, bad communication that could do the same. What I'm <laughs> emphasizing now, right now, on like, if communication will be there, uh, it's I think would solve many issues and we could work together very well. For sure. Well. And that essence of what you were saying of, of no matter if in conversation, if you agree or disagree on topics, um, if you're able to transmit that you see that person and you, you give them the space to express themselves, um, that already resolves a lot of the, the friction that can exacerbate a, a difference of opinions and that you can, can come to a conclusion that you have a difference of opinions and, and find a way um, without it reaching a, a, a kind of climax of, of conflict. Yes, and in order to do that, we need the nonverbal part in the communication, or it happens, but if we are aware of it and enhance that, I think it would add so much to people's life and definitely in the life of a practitioner, it's one of the basic essentials that I need to bring with me in order to have a successful process with my clients. Definitely. And that brings us already to, to half an hour, Claudia. That was super fast. Yes. <laughs> and and um, always uh, so, so wonderful to, to dive into these topics and, and this one in particular, which is, has so many aspects. And I think we could have so many more lives about just this topic. Yes, there, there is. It's very tempting to even understand that through the computer screen, like I think you listen to my words, but you see my expressions, the tonation, the excitement. There's so many more aspects that are 
actually touching us and connecting us and allowing to feel that will already bring everything closer and into more movement. So, yes, I, I, I continue, you see. You do, you do. <laughs> We <laughs> should have that life here that now. movement and that flow, there are so many options uh, for anybody who wants to join. Um, Claudia is uh, giving her uh, Panthera flow. Yes. Uh, which is open to everybody. It is online uh, still this October on Wednesday the 12th. Uh, so that's accessible. We've got next week, you're also giving to our practitioners an advanced course on touch and communication. Um, yeah. So if hands there are any on. practitioners there, hands on course, finally, those COVID um, restrictive days are uh, hopefully behind us and there's more chance for engagement. So there's a chance of a course not to be missed our next instagram live with that i'll be talking to vetted um will be a little more focused on the pantheray studies but with the question of working with trauma um which is a topic that that vetted is also very um experienced with and and passionate about absolutely and our students and practitioners got already our information for the events of Uh, October, but whoever doesn't have our newsletter yet, subscribe and then you have all of the events in an overview and can join us and we just send it out today. <laughs> so yes. if you didn't get one, if you didn't know. get one, send us a DM, send us an email. There's so many ways now of, of connecting and, and communicating. Um, and also near, closer to the end of the month, there will be a, also an in-person with Merav. Um, who's a teacher of the Panthera Approach at the Panthera Approach School in Berlin. Um, also an interactive, hands-on, engaged conversation with her. So a lot in store for everybody this October. Absolutely. So great. I think that wraps it up very nicely. Thank you again, Claudia. And thank you to everyone watching from Athens, from Portugal, Cascais, um, from all over the place. I don't know who else, but those were the comments that I, that I read <laughs> briefly from where everyone is. Um, Berlin, and maybe even from the US, I believe. So quite a, quite a group. That's wonderful. Um, thank so you. So greetings to you all and thank you. Yes, absolutely. Greetings. Thank you, Nicole. Thank you all there. Have a lovely evening or day ahead of you. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Bye.